Hey, you for real? I'm asking you to middle a diamond for me here. Now, all I want for my end is 8,000. What I'm saying to you is you should give it to somebody that don't know any better, because that's a fugazi, all right? That's a fugazi? How do you know it's a fugazi? You looked at it for two seconds. What? It's a fake. It's like a reunion with my old buddy over here. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's good and to I, be with you again, Jimmy. I miss it you, man. is, man. You're the best. No, you are. Well, you this make is... me the best. You make me look good. Uh, look at you. Look at you. You do. It's all in the editing. It's all in the questions, man. <laughs> well, you know, I don't ask questions. We just shoot the shit like we're sitting down having L and B. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. L and B. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good times. That was like a, almost a religious experience going to that place. It's ridiculous. But yeah. now, if, if people do not know who I'm speaking to right now, this is my friend. And they probably don't. So go ahead. Well, what they're going to find out. Well, you know what it is? A lot of, uh, like, so many people obviously know your work. But this is Mr. John Caglione Jr., he is an Academy Award winning makeup and effects artist with a resume that is second to none. And I'm going to put it out there. I posted it on the Mission Statements uh, group on Facebook that I was recording with you. And I wrote like a kind of like not really a long thing, but a little blah, blah, blah. And, and I wrote it at the end. I said, a super down to earth legend. And it's the truth. Well, you know, I'm just the makeup guy, man. I mean, it's, it's it's not it's not like rocket science, you know. It it might not be rocket science, but what you we're, do, we're a service organization here, you know. <laughs> Is that what you want to call yourself? Yeah, yeah. All right, hey, listen. Uh, like we're fair doing enough. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're service to the producers, director, and the actors. You know, it's like. But yeah, but you had you, but you bring a specific, amazing skill in order to make these things happen. Well, you're very kind. At least I try. I'm, I'm trying. Well, well, keep doing what you're doing because you're doing. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I got to keep trying because this is all I know how to do. Right. So, uh, I, I, hey, I, listen. I, you know, I kind of put all my eggs in one basket, Jimmy. But and and you know you know uh, listen. If people, if the any, if there's any carryover from the old pod, the other podcast that I did, I had you on. You were episode two hundred and thirty-two. This one's relatively new. This is episode twenty-one. But wow, it's, yeah, it's relatively new. But I don't put them out every week. I put them out every two, three weeks. It's super. It's a lot less stressful for me, even though I didn't even yeah. need to be stressed for the other one. But I was just, I get like that. I don't know. Yeah. So, if there is any people that spill over, you know, from the other one, then they might have heard some of the things we'll talk about or whatever. But but we and we spoke about it even in person when we, you know, me and Nikki, we met you and your lovely wife out on Long Island. We yeah. met and you met at, at Spumoni Gardens and we started bullshitting, not even just about your profession, but a lot of other things. Um, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, absolutely, and we need to do it again sooner rather than later. And I don't, I'm not just, I'm was, not just saying that because I know where you live, John. <laughs> I, I'm glad there's not too many that do. Right? You know? Yeah, no, me neither. Same here. I'm glad you know where I live. Yeah. So, but you have a very, very. I'm going to say it's it's a story that wouldn't happen in today's day and age as far as how you got into the business. You know, I know the story, so. I'm not going to speak for you. So yeah. I guess just maybe if you want to just touch on just, just to let the people that are watching and listening know how you got your foot in the door, which is incredible to me. Yeah. I mean, it's just like I wrote a fan letter to a famous makeup guy. I mean, it's just that simple. I, I, I found a magazine and in the magazine was not the makeup guy's address, 
but it was the address for the Linda Blair fan club because it was about The Exorcist. You know, because that that movie like scorched my brain. When Every I saw it. everyone of our generation from back then, it, yeah, it has damaged us. <laughs> so you know, yes, yes, it damaged me so badly that this is what I do now. You yes, know? like you know, I had to like I had to know immediately. But I wrote a I wrote a fan letter to the Linda Blair fan club in Hollywood, not knowing where the genius makeup artist Dick Smith lived. All right. And uh, and I wrote it to the Linda Blair Fan Club at Warner Brothers Studios in Hollywood, and and put my phone number in there and some questions, and I drew a picture of Dick Smith on the envelope, and somebody, some very nice person, forwarded that one letter to Dick Smith's house where he worked out of his basement in Larchmont, New York. Wow! Which I was up, I was living in upstate New York at the time, mm-hmm. so he was only he was only like almost. 150 miles away from my house. Ah, so so he called me on the phone. On a landline? It's crazy. He called me on a landline. <laughs> I was That's playing good. football in the street with my buddies, and my mother yells, Johnny, Dick Smith's on the phone. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. You I, must, I you must have been flipping out in your head. Oh, you must have been oh, so nervous. It's like having the Beatles call your house. You know, like... This is what I, I just, you know, kind of set my mind on doing monster makeup back then. You know, yeah. I was just like so into it. And so it was like having, like, if you want to be a rock star and you pick up the guitar, it's like Jimi Hendrix is calling my house. Sure. Yeah. You know it's I mean? the equivalent. Knows, I, yeah. It's, so, it's, you know, <laughs> it's a miracle, man. Your mom yells out the window that Dick Smith is on the phone. It's crazy. There's like a story like that would never happen today at all. No, at no. all. It's just that the world is just completely different. Well, it's all like, it's all emails now and texts yeah. and you know yeah. and and everyone's on Instagram, so you could you know Dick Smith would be on Instagram today probably. Sure. So you private message him, and if he gets back to you, but back in those days there was no. Yeah. Google or computers or cell phones or you couldn't track where your mail with your stamp is going. You don't know if it got there, if it, if it gets returned no. to you, okay. But it's just like you, you just like a message in a bottle. It's just, right, it goes out and whatever. Exactly, happens. <laughs> that's what I tell people. It was like being stranded on a deserted island. Yeah, and, and then throwing a putting a note in a bottle, throwing in the ocean. Yeah, and and, and the ocean liner happens to go by the USS Dick Smith. In my right. case. <laughs> and I'm saved, you know? Yeah. And he and took he really you under his me. wing. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And you were he how did. old? I was going on, I was 15 going on 16, somewhere in there. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So, and, you know, he was uh, the most, I mean, I'm, I'm in my 60s now. And of all the people I've known, except my wife and my loved ones, he was the most generous person. I mean, he really built my career. Yeah, you know, he recommended me to Saturday Night NBC when they were looking for an apprentice right out of high school. They called Dick Smith, and he said, "I got this guy Johnny." So I went down. I did a makeup for the guy at NBC. I brought a friend. I did a whole prosthetic makeup because I figured that's my shot at the brass ring. If I don't grab this, sure. So I prepared a whole makeup for the just to meet the head of the makeup department at NBC, and I got hired. I got hired that day. That's so, so awesome. And yeah. you, you worked you worked on the, some of the the original Coneheads. Yeah, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, with Dan Aykroyd. And yeah. I you know I saw yeah. you posted it today that I didn't know, which which I really didn't think that hard into Saturday Night Live. But you post something today from 1977. You're doing makeup on the damn Bee Gees, man. Yes. From 77, Saturday Night Fever, bro. That was what? the time, man. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is like the height of the Bee Gees. And you're like doing yes, that. Yes, the height up. of disco. Yeah. Yeah. Studio 54, the disco, New York, New York. You know, yeah, uh, 2001 is Space Odyssey in Brooklyn. Yeah. You know, those, these clubs were going at that time. It was like polyester suits and the whole mm-hmm. thing. It was like, like I tell people, when I was started at NBC, it, if you see the movie Taxi Driver, Sure. That's New York City in that time. Mm-hmm. And Scorsese captured it beautifully. Perfectly. So that, that's that moment, you know, making up the Bee Gees at NBC. 
you know, I walked out, I'd walk down to my apartment, my sublet on 33rd Street, and I would be walking by hookers on 42nd Street, getting yeah. propositioned in Times Square. And it, it was so and what an incredible time to be in New York. Sure. To me. Yeah. As you're saying that, because you know, you know me, and we've had these conversations in an in an aroundabout way, but you're saying, you know, you're walking through Times Square and stuff, and it just pops in my head that you worked on on it's it, it's I don't know if it's a favorite movie of mine, but it definitely holds a little place in my heart. And it's it's a terrible movie, but it's so good that it's bad, like one of those type of things. You worked on Basket Case. Hell yeah. And I yeah. love that movie. Like I became friendly with Kevin Van Hetten, Rick, the guy who played Dwayne Bradley. Yeah. And yeah. And there's, you know, he's he's walking through Times Square with the basket in his hand. Yeah. And the guy comes over and him, there's like 95,000 drugs he names off. And it's just such a dirty, dirty city. And it's so good. Yeah. And doing this whole exploration film location thing that I do, which this yeah, which, spawn, is cool. which spawned this podcast, basically. And I've gone and researched and found several locations from that movie, like, Dwayne Bradley's old loft where he's hang where Belial is, you know, hanging him from the sign from the Hotel Broslin sign. Like I found that. A lot of it is still the same. The actual theaters where he's walking from. Like I found so many locations. There's several movies that you've worked on. Like yeah. several. The Cotton Club inside the Empire. Well, you, you found, yeah, you found one the other day where we were shooting the hunger, right? Yes, where they were, where they were just going to lunch at a yes, restaurant. Yes, it was. Yep, David Bowie. They were there sitting in there in Queens, the yeah. yeah, at the Neptune Diner, right. and I'm sitting in the exact spot that Bowie was sitting in. Right, and right. you worked on the Hunger with Bowie. I helped Dick Smith put on some of the old age makeups on David Bowie in New York for a week in New York with them. And he was the night, you know, to be with Dick Smith was, no, that was unbelievable. But sure. Bowie was so nice, man, you know, mm -hmm. like alarm it. Like, you know, he wanted me to bring in pictures of my kids because my kids were young, my two daughters. And oh, bring them in. You know, I want to show you my pictures. And that's the way the guy was, you know, just. Yeah. So a humble, like down-to-earth guy, like a regular a guy. Real deal, yeah, just incredible. Yeah, it's it's always it's always refreshing when you meet somebody like that. That that could every in in every, you wouldn't be surprised if certain people have an ego, like an above you type thing. But they, it's so great when people are just humble and down to earth, who are like super famous, or you know what I yeah. mean. It, it, it's it's. Yeah. I've met a handful, a couple. They, they're, honestly, there's only like one that I was just kind of like, ah, like ah, I kind of wish I didn't Come meet on. this person. Oh. Linda Blair. Was she really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm disappointed, man. Me too, man. Because, listen, I used to go, me and Nikki and my daughter, we used to go to horror conventions all the time. And not everybody is horror that's there. You know, I've met, you know. Right. You know, uh, Martin Cole from the Karate Kid. You know, I met I met all these people, and I mean, Reagan McNeil from The Exorcist is an iconic figure yeah. in horror. I mean, it's yeah. undeniable. And yeah. I grew up watching it. I'm still disturbed by it if I even watch yes. it. My, daughter, my daughter's not even scared. She looks at it. And she tells me, "Say, like, Dad, she just has a potty mouth." That's what she tells me. I'm like, "How are you not destroyed from this?" Movie? <laughs> wrong with you Tell kids nowadays it. kids nowadays she's like yeah it's like she just has a potty mouth i'm like yeah i guess wow. yeah wow. it's very strange so I, she, there was yeah. a couple of times i think three times that she was that linda blair was at conventions that i was at and one of them because my daughter wanted to meet her yeah. And, and, and I have no, and she's not cheap, you know, it's, you know, she charges you like a hundred bucks for an eight by 10 and an autograph and an extra like 40 bucks to take a selfie with your own camera with her. So she's not cheap. You know what I mean? And her line is always around the damn block. Sure. And she just has this, like this attitude, like, I just don't like being here and doing this oh. it's this it's this attitude and i swear john i wanted to give her my money on three occasions like take it you know what i mean yeah yeah and, and after the third time i think it was the third time was when my daughter was with me and i'm watching her and she's watching her and she's like 
dad, like, what's wrong with her? I was like, she has like this nasty attitude, right? She's like, yeah. She's like, I don't even think I even want to meet her. So at this point, like, yeah. I won't even give her five dollars on principle. Right. Oh, that's three times, shame. and I gave it three times. Three times is a charm. Three shots. Yeah. I would have no problem. I had money tucked on the side, no problem. Because there's always the list of all the people that are at the conventions. I'm like, okay, I want to watch, meet this person, this person, this person. And there's always, and I, okay, I budget like my, I always spend like a thousand dollars more than I intend on. But, right. I, but I'm like, okay, we're definitely going to meet Linda Blair, or at least try. Right. Three right. times I tried. I wanted to. But there was yeah. something in me I just couldn't do it. I was I was kind of thinking like you're an actress or at least were an actress. At least pretend like you want to be there. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're from you're from California. You get you definitely got flown in round trip from the convention. You right. you are staying in a hotel and it's probably not a shitty hotel. And your line is wrapped around the block and you're making money hand over fist for a signature on a piece of paper from a movie that came out in the seventies. Yeah. Maybe pretend like, wow, I can't actually believe that my legacy is still going. I but, wonder where that attitude comes from. I wonder why, how she, why she, why people develop that kind of attitude. Because I don't know. You know when you're saying that, the, in my experience, like the total flip side of that, yeah, of that of that type of you know an actor, uh, Johnny Depp. Have you ever heard stories about Johnny Depp? Only from you. Uh, well, if I'm repeating myself. No, no. Time, see, but... see, me and you, nobody else has heard these. So it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Johnny, I worked with him two times, you know, Donnie Brasco in a film that he directed with Brando in it. And Johnny Depp, and I don't know if it's his upbringing or life experience, you know, it's got to be all of the above. But when he's on a film, he, and after he finishes a 12, 13, 14 hour day, he meets all of his fans. Mm. And I I would, like on Donnie Brasco, every night, and he worked a lot. He's almost in the entire movie. He's almost sure. in every scene. He would sign every autograph and take every picture with everybody. And like, there would be a, I, dude, there was a crowd. He would disappear in the middle of it. And two and a half hours later, he'd be like the last few people. That, see, that right there Consistently. Is that's like that means day. that's so huge to somebody like me and i'll be the first one to say i'm a nerd when it comes to certain things like that yeah. and you know you know especially things that connect me to movies and like me when i was a kid like there's a lot of things that 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 i take from these things and somebody that like that who is down to earth and has time for his fans it, yes that, that it's that speaks volumes to me and like, I think I, it's like also- just from that i have a ton of more respect from Johnny Depp. I marveled at it, you know, watching yeah. him on both films. It never failed, you know? And uh, he, he never, like, blew anyone off. It's like, oh, I'm tired. That never happened with him. And I don't know where that is. You know, maybe it's his, he was always, he was a musician before he became an actor. Yeah. So maybe it's that rock star thing. I don't know where you're like, these are your fans. They come to see you play. Right. So maybe that transitions into the film business where he, sees his audiences coming to movie theaters and watching his films. Sure. It, it could they, just, they know where their bread's buttered, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, it, it could be that thing that's in him that, that unfortunately some people don't have. It's just, it's simple and it's just gratitude. Well, you work a lot with bands. You go out and see bands. You you, you do that still, right? Yeah, are they, well, for are the they, most part. I, I kind of slowed down, but I, I could have my peaks and valleys. I'm sure I'll be out there more again. Yeah, but yeah. you but do you see a lot of that where the fans sure. are waiting backstage or outside? What's the dog's name? <laughs> it's fine. Oh, that's uh that's Gavin and Murphy. Okay. They're two Aust- they're two Australian they're two Australian shepherds. <laughs> the wolves. Nice. All right, Gavin. Sorry, man. <laughs> No, listen, I, that I happens. Like, it's fine. Yeah. It's cool. I work out of my house, like what mm-hmm. I've been doing for most of my career. So, yeah. you know, this is... You know. Hey, listen, it's fine. It's it's all yeah. good. But, um... My daughter's but, here. My, young, my youngest daughter's here. She just, she just drove in from New Jersey. Nice. We're in Jersey. She's over in... Where are you, Nicole? Union City? Yeah, come here. Say hi to Jimmy. 
makeup no, on. She doesn't have any makeup. Well, you came to the right place. I'll, make <laughs> I'll help you. I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up. This is my daughter. Hello. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to Jimmy meet you, Dawson. too. We're actually Hi, Helen. Right now. Hi, Jimmy. There's Helen. How are you? The hell are you? I'm good. Nice to see you again. We all have to hang out again. Oh, Let's yes, do it, man. Well. I'm, 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 drag, I'm dragging you to the Warren Cemetery. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. We're just going to kidnap you, and we're just, we're just going to tell you we're going somewhere else. <laughs> there. Helen, it looks like I'm growing your head out of my shoulder. Yes, it's like a Belial. <laughs> nice to see you, Jim. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nice to see you too, Helen. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. All right. See, that's what makes these things fun and cool. There's, there's, there's nothing scripted here, John. Oh, uh, God bless you, man. Thank you. So All right, hard. come on. So, right, so yeah, I mean, like, what, like, like Donnie Brasco, and I'll just, I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm not even gonna try to segue. Like, yeah. you're like Al Pacino's guy. For the most part, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and but, but I'm I'm gonna I won't tell your story, but I will lead into it so you can tell it in your own words because I already have it. In oh, my you head. tell it! Come on, you tell it. I can't tell your whole story. It's just you. All right, me and you were eating. We're eating at L and B, and I had mentioned, you know, there's got to be a certain time frame. And I'm sure it happens often where you stop and you're like, wow, like I'm in the presence of these people and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And there was a, a situation that you found yourself in that I got all sorts of excited when you talk. I'm like, that is the most coolest shit ever. You were on, you were on set or you were, you were taking a break or whatever on, on a Pacino movie I could be wrong, but it might have been maybe Insomnia or something like that. I'm not sure, but you mentioned the movie. I don't remember that part. Yeah. But you were walking past his Al Pacino's trailer. Uh-huh. And he called you in. And you sat down on the couch next to him, and he's flipping the TV station. This was the last big show I did. This was Hunters, the TV series. Okay. On Amazon. Yeah. All right. And he's flipping yes. the stations around. And then what happens? It's Scarface comes on. Tony <laughs> Montana, man. And it's surreal. And you know, he knows I'm getting a kick out of it. You know, I, I would be I'm bugging out right now thinking about it. <laughs> so to be in that position, all right. He's flipping the station around. Yeah. Space comes on and he leaves the movie on, right? Yes. <laughs> Which is yeah. awesome. And then you sit there, you're watching Scarface and you look to your right and you're sitting next to fucking Tony Montana. Yes. And I'm like, actually, like, loving it. I want to hug him, you know? And he Dude. knows it. He knows yeah. it. I'm like, this is, I'm like, this is fucking great, man. It is. Like, that would it. Look, look, it's like just the whole universe and how everything and th this is where you're finding yourself in that moment i would have been flipping out and i was too everybody you know i mean we're, we love movies you know yeah and ah, i love so how you really helped me out big time you know so it's like it's all that in the mix you yeah know? it and really you, is you met him you the first thing that you did with 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 pacino was dick tracy right yeah yeah. Which you won your which which you won your Academy Award for? Yes, with Doug Drexler, he and I won the Oscar together that night. Yeah, yeah. And then from yeah. from, from Dick Tracy on, I mean, your IMDb, you have so many things that you've done with Pacino. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, he's been a great, um, really, really. I mean, I don't know how it works, you know, out, but. Um, that that'll never happen you know that 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 happened only with one time in my career with one actor you know it's and like, what an actor for that to happen with yeah yeah yes you unbelievable know. man just unbelievable yeah you know? we're still in touch i saw him at um in new york he came in to do this big thing with tribeca they did they did a screening of heat again oh. uh, michael man digitally remastered it or did something with it I and watched Alfred. it again. About, I watched it like last week again. Yeah, such a slick movie, man. Yeah. And, 
and 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 see once see once we became friends and and we've had conversations about these things, I'll watch a movie, and while Heat is is on, the whole scene with the legendary makeup that Michael Mann didn't even want to go near or touch with Danny Trejo when he's oh yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah which you did that makeup. Well, I did a lot of different variations for Mike. I did, um, we took a mold of Danny Trejo's face and I did like four different, five different sculptures of this beat up makeup because they, they were going to really show it. Michael Mann was going to really feature it. And uh, I had a meeting with Michael with all these different sculptures on Danny Trejo's life cast. And Michael Mann kind of mixed and matched what he liked. And then I just took those elements and made a process to make up. But I was really nervous because um, I knew that De Niro would be like very close to the makeup. Right. And I, I'd, I'd heard that De Niro's very like detail orientated, you know, sure. and, you know, and if he's looking at a makeup that doesn't look good to him or doesn't look real, um, you know, I was like, that was, you know, once we had decided the makeup, I knew Michael Mann was going to be good with it. But with De Niro that close to D- Danny Trejo's face, and I remember that we did the rehearsal and Danny laid in the spot. We dressed it with blood and De Niro was doing the rehearsal. And he just looked up at me and he went, you know, he just went, you know, like that De Niro face. Like, yeah, this looks good. I was like, I was like, thank you. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> thank you. You know? Yeah. But if it doesn't work for him, then we got a problem, you know? Right. Of course. And did you see, um, because you, 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 you ran through my mind again, did you see it's um I watched it on Tubi, but it might be somewhere else. It's called Inmate Number One, The Rise no. of Danny Trejo. No, no. All right. Do you have the Tubi app? T U B S. It's yes. on Tubi. That's where I watched it. Now, okay. now if people don't really, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing. I'll make it a short story. But you know, Danny, you know, he grew up surrounded by crime in, in LA, yeah. this and that. He did jail time, he was armed robber and all this stuff. Yeah. And it goes through his career where he's on runaway train and then this and that. And then and then eventually they go to heat and they talk about that makeup. And no and, kidding. Wow. Yes. And I want to say that it is his sister. I want to say it's his sister in the interview that they're talking to. And she said that knowing or it could have been. It could have been. His, it's, it might be his daughter or his sister. One or the other. It's really neither here nor there. Somebody's right. close from a family member, and she was saying that knowing. That's why I want to say it's this. It's the. It's the daughter knowing her dad and his past. Oh. How his life could have legitimately ended up the way yes. he looked in heat, and it was so realistic looking. Huh. to his daughter that it like it like traumatized her for lack of wow. a better holy cow I didn't yes. know that it's called huh. inmate number one the rise of Danny Trejo it is phenomenal I'll check it out thanks for the heads up Jimmy yeah. I, I ran it I ran it to Danny uh, uh, a few years back maybe five years back they were doing uh, Chris Nolan was going to uh, host a uh, a heat screening with Michael Mann was there and Pacino at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And I happened to be in LA and I went with a friend of mine that night and I bumped into Danny and, you know, we hadn't seen each other, you know, since that film. And he told me that his mother can't look at that. You know, it's like, I, it bothers her. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, Oh man, I, you know, I'm just <laughs> felt bad. But, but that's the like, yeah. that's effect how awesome and realistic it was. It's like it's yeah. incredible shit, man. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So well, hey, listen, thank God, you know, it all yeah. worked out. That's what a, a great film to be on. What a great film. Oh my God. Legends. You were everywhere. It's the, the cast alone is insane. And and last last summer I went on this really, really long road trip, like eight days, almost three thousand miles I drove, hitting all kinds of locations and uh, buildings. Right. I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So so this next summer coming up, it's kind of in the works. I'm not sure exactly my whole route, but I'm going to a lot of it is going to be in California. And I have a whole bunch of filming locations from heat 
that oh, yeah, I need to. Oh, yeah, like old spots like the bank robbery, the the where the armored truck spot right across from the Benevent. Benevent, what is it? The Benevent. What is it? The hotel, the the Bonaventure Hotel. Yeah, it's right there. It's right across the street. Yeah, the whole spot with all the whole shootout. Like I have yeah. so many. There's one on oh. Fla- is something Flower Street. Yes. Is- is the bank where is Tom Sizemore was walking out with the glasses and he's walking out with the big bag. Like that yes. whole shootout is all I have everything mapped out. Like the whole armored car to heist in the beginning. Like I have all of that stuff. The hotel yeah. room where he where De Niro kills Wayne Bro. I have all of that. Yes, down by the airport, right? We yes. Shot that by the, we shot it in the Hilton right there, I think. It was one of those hotels. Yeah. Yeah. yeah God. I, I know, have it in was, my computer, the actual room. That it happened in, like I had the actual. It's like fourteen or something or forty something. I didn't have the room number and everything. I'm gonna go in wow. there and and get the shots of De Niro in the hallway. Yeah, where he's like leading, like with the flashlight. <laughs> you know, when he pulls the fire alarm, like that whole scene. Like, you yeah, know, I, I can't wait, man. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. You yeah. know that shootouts. You know the shootout. I think we shot that over like eight weekends or ten weekends. We we could only get in there from like Saturday morning to Sunday night. Yeah. And we had to wrap and then do the rest of the movie. And it was just a feat in filmmaking that we were able to like shoot a certain amount of it and then wrap it all up and then come back and redress it and do more and then close it up and do it. And it was just like it was amazing just technically. Yeah, what, it's, it what an insane shootout. Like, how many yeah. bullets were shot? Now, it's insane. But, you know, people look at it and they think, oh, well, that was just all done in, like, in one, one weekend. Oh, no but way. It's, it's, it's downtown L.A. It's, you know, you can only get in there on the weekends. Yeah, so it's the middle of the street in downtown L.A. That's crazy. And it had to be matched over eight, eight or ten weekends. It's, you know, it was just a feat of filmmaking. Yeah. And it stitches together like it all happened a lot right there in that, you know, what, 15, 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah. You know, it it's really a was- long shootout. It's a good solid 10 minutes long, solid. Was, just yeah, guess, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that film was really incredible to work on. And it, it was a turning point in my career because up until around that point, I was just known for a lot of character and effects makeup. Right. And then I came into Heat and I was the department head of beauty makeup and special effects makeup said doing Al's makeup and the principal cast, except De Niro, except well, I had Kenny Diaz who did these beautiful tattoos on everyone. And he yeah. was my key, but it, that was a, that was a turning point in my career where I just didn't do monsters and prosthetics anymore. I could do a department yeah. of an entire legitimate picture. Did, did you do Ashley Judd? Yes. Wow. And Val Kilmer. And, 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 and you know, Amy Brenneman and yeah. John Voight. John Voight. Well, Kenny Diaz did his makeup and did a beautiful job. Really okay. beautiful. You know, it, Kenny Diaz, I should tell you about him. He sure. was Rob Boutin's right-hand guy on The Thing. Really? Yeah, and he was Mickey Rourke's personal makeup artist for years. Wow. You know, and he did all of Mickey's early films. And Kenny is just, he, he was. I think he was nominated for an Academy Award with Dick Smith for Dad, the old age makeup on Jack Lemmon. Really? So I had this guy as my second makeup artist on Heat. So you know how could you? Yeah. How could you mess with someone like that? You know. That's incredible, dude. So big shout out to Ken Diaz, man. The guy is like a monster makeup guy. You know, just yeah, yeah. great, great makeup artist. There was there was something that I seen. It might have been on that tra- on that Trejo documentary because the actor Eddie Bunker. You know who Eddie Bunker is? Yes. Eddie Bunker, I I knew him as Mr. Blue from Reservoir Dogs. But right. but I've seen Runaway Train and he's in Runaway Train with the bald head. And that guy is the guy that basically showed Danny Trejo the ropes about Hollywood and being an actor. Right. So they were saying it's it, in one point or another in heat with Trejo they they tried to make John Voight Kind yes. of based on the on the way Eddie Bunker yes. really is. Yes. As an homage to Eddie Bunker. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Hey, a little, little, little small little behind the scenes that not too many people know. You sure you weren't around in the makeup trailer? I know. 
I'm telling you, I nerd out when it comes to like all these behind the scenes little, I guess, yeah. little fun facts. I don't know. I like all that stuff, man. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. Yeah. yeah Eddie Bunker. Very- that he was patterned after. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And that was the guy who, like Danny Trejo, basically gives all the credit for his career to Eddie Bunker. Yeah. And what about John Voight's incredible performance? I mean, Unbelievable. You know, I mean, yeah. the unbelievable. Yeah, that whole movie is insane. And and he wrote this. There's the, the he put out a new book. It's Heat Two. Yes. Is there going to be another movie? That would be kind of awesome. Yeah, I think there probably will be. Good. Well, yeah. you need to, uh, if Pacino is in it, because obviously Pacino survives. Yeah. Well, I don't know how old he is now. I don't know if it would fit, but maybe maybe a prequel. Maybe go back a little bit. You know, in time. Maybe. How yeah, those I guys? Johnny Keggs on the horn. Yeah, oh yeah. Let, <laughs> listen, I, I almost did another Michael Mann film. It almost worked out, but it didn't. I was going to do Ferrari, uh, the movie with Michael Mann that he just finished uh, over really? in Italy. Yeah, was, I did that. some makeup. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, yeah I did some know. makeup. Yeah, that's really nice, man. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And just man, by chance. Manhunter. Manhunter, that's another Michael Mann film right there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you've you worked yeah. on so much, man. Like I've I've found spots from from Chud that I hit, un even yeah. unfaithful. You worked with Diane Lane, man, who has it's you know she was Cherry Valance in The Outsiders, and without The Outsiders right. on that house, this whole Delta Bravo thing wouldn't exist, and this whole podcast wouldn't exist. So wow. Diane Lane is actually like a weird little portion of all of this. Wow. Yeah, man. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> strange. I don't know. It's just you know something. Donnie Brasco, <laughs> legendary. I mean, the Cotton, oh. Club, even the Cotton Club, man. It's like, come on. It's well, they just of... you know he recut the film. Have you seen the redo? I haven't. Oh, it's really great. It's really you know it was always meant to be like a two hour and two and twenty minute film, and yeah. I think the story goes Orion made Coppola cut it to do it like in an hour and 40 minutes, which kills the story. Right. So Coppola just went back and recut it. And it's, it's really, really amazing film to watch. And there's another connection. Coppola did the outsiders. Hence. That's yes. right. Yep. Yeah. 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 What yeah, a great man. film. Pony boy. Pony boy Curtis. Well, well, I don't know if you know, well, you might know this, but Danny boy who this Delta Bravo DB is all based on. He owns the Curtis Brothers House. It's now the Outsiders House Museum in Tulsa. I think I've seen that on your Facebook page or somebody's Facebook page. Yeah, it was probably mine. Yeah, yeah. Nikki's. Yeah, we we went there last summer. He bought right. the house right across the street because the house is a museum. There's not even running water in it. But right, right. across the street, he bought a house and it's, he calls it the Greaser Hideout, and it's an Airbnb. So if you want to go there, you you rent the house for the whole day or the night or the weekend or however long you want. And it's just Tulsa is an awesome spot. So it's like every road trip since that last road trip I I did, I never did anything like like that before. But once we were out there on the road, it's like every year now, like when my vacation comes up in the summer, I'm going on a road trip. And depending on the spot in the country that I decide to go, if it's within reach, I will always stop in Tulsa because that's technically Delta Bravo headquarters. Right, right, right. Sure, man. Sure. I yeah. think I've seen that post. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. He's he, he, he did some amazing stuff out there in Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, I never thought that I'd be ever saying that either. Like, yeah, <laughs> like ever, ever. It's the truth. Like, I, some of the things I say now, it's like, wow, it's. it's... <laughs> Am I getting older? What's the story? Yeah, what's, what's happening? happening? Like, what's, what's going on? Me? Well, you know, it's all positive and it's all good stuff, man. So it's, I love it. I love all this stuff. And, you know, I've always been like a movie nerd and a horror nerd. So all this stuff, it just goes. I know. It's just a big, it's, it combines everything. You know, it's like yeah. I find myself literally standing in the middle of the the actual house where they filmed the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Oh, my God. And it's exactly the same. And it's a restaurant now, but they were closed when we got there. But the owners came out. And I showed them what we were doing, and they were like, "Oh, just walk around." And I'm, it was like I had free reign of the Texas Chainsaw, I'm at the Sawyer House. I'm like, "Wow!" Walking up the same stairs that Leatherface is chasing Marilyn Burns up, and I'm looking around, right. 
and I had chills. And I, yes. was, I even told Nikki, I was standing there and I was like, uh, this might sound fucking crazy, but I'm having like a moment right now, like in my yeah. body, like this is, I'm in the set of this movie. How am I here right now? You know what I mean? Like, and and yeah. I find myself doing that a lot. Like I know I'm going to be on Flower Street in downtown LA taking yeah. a picture of where Pacino is up against the light pole with the giant machine gun. And I'm going to, and I'm going to be standing right in the middle of where that shootout happened. And it might not mean shit to somebody who's walking past every day there, but to yeah. me, it just means something. Cause I'm a nerd like that. And I, no, I, 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 I don't say it all day long. I don't care. It's, it's, it's yeah. fun. Thank God. Yeah, man. I could be yeah. doing a lot worse stupid shit than trying to find where Al Pacino stood for a few minutes in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's true. No, listen, man. When I go into the city every once in a while and I hit a spot where, you know, it brings back good memories. You know, yeah. just even yeah. walking around 30 Rock. Yeah. You know, like being, you know, 18 and walking around and just revisiting those places. Yeah. You know, and it puts you in the place like going to the Texas... Where where was the Texas Chainsaw House? Where is that? They, they, it was it was originally in, well, it's in oh, 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 oh Jesus Christ! It's in Texas, obviously. It's in. Give me a second. Is it like nor, is it like up near Oklahoma? Is it up like that? No, oh. no, no, no. I'm gonna find it right now. But but um, the um, they originally they took the house and they actually cut it into like seven different pieces and they oh. moved it. It was, it's, Oh, it's in, it's 1010 King court, Kingsland, Texas. Kingsland, and, Texas. Kingsland. Um, but they actually, they literally cut the house up and they moved it like two towns over and they put it back. I'm talking, John, meticulous like i could take a random screenshot from the movie of a random room that they're in right and, I've, and I, I did it with my with my location stuff and i would take a picture of the room how it is now and it would be i'm talking down to the thin little window molding and the panel like everything is wow. exact, meticulous exact Right, like, it's unbelievable. The attention to detail, what they did to that house, is is impressive as hell. Yeah, man, it's that that movie. Just oh my gosh, there's hardly there's like there's hardly oh. any blood at all. It's all suggested, right. and right. it's just gritty and disgusting and creepy. We stayed at the get the original when they pull up. Originally, they pull the green van up to the gas station in the movie, right? And yep. that's down in Bastrop, yeah. Texas. But somebody kind of like what Danny did with the outsider's house. They someone had like the vision. They found that gas station. They refurbished the entire thing. They have horror conventions there. It's a huge gift shop. And behind it, they built like five cabins. So the first real night, like, we we flew into Austin, and we stayed like literally. We slept like two hours in this little hotel just to shower and put our stuff down. And right. then we woke up first thing in the morning. We hit a whole bunch of locations. And the first real night, we stayed in one of the cabins at the gas station from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Wow. That's... It's like the first thing in the morning, I open up my door and I'm like, Leatherface was chasing this poor girl here. And they like, right. I'm like, this is so cool. Yeah. I ate a barbecue sandwich from, because it even says, we slaughter gas station just like the movie. <laughs> you can buy barbecue sandwiches there. I'm like, this is amazing. Amazing. Oh man, what a, I, oh. I was such a nerd for eight days. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it makes you feel like you're like a child again, man. You're a hundred percent, dude. Yeah, you're, you're in the picture. Yeah, I'm you're on the set picture. here. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Uh, you know, even just the opening scene where they the guy gets in the van. And, you know, my 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 dad, my grandfather makes good, good head cheese. Head cheese. Oh yeah, the, the head oh, cheese. That guy is one of the most in, in movies. Period. That guy is so disturbing in that scene. Oh man! It's it's a, with the birthmark on his face, and yes. he works himself with the straight razor, and just his mannerisms. It's so creepy and like so realistic, man. It's unsettling already. You're like very unsettling. You're like, 
you're feeling like motion. At least I did motion sickness. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, you know, what's going to happen? You know, yeah. and, and just the whole thing, the organic sense of shooting it. Like you're in the van with these kids. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Pearl shot that. And right. I actually spoke to him. I had him on my old podcast and we spoke all about that. It was like, it was 110 degrees in Texas and right. in a van with no air condition. We're cramped in there. It was like, it was such an experience to do. And that was his first thing that he ever did. Now he, he's done like 800 music videos. He's friends with right. me. I mean, he's done so much stuff. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, they caught lightning in a bottle in that film, man. Yeah, they, they absolutely did. Yeah. We, we, one of the, one of the stops we did too, is the very opening scene of that movie where the, where the, where there's, you know, there's the, the corpse that they dug up and she's stuck up on one of the monuments in the cemetery, like right, right. in the beginning. Like that's called the, that's called the Baghdad Cemetery in Leander, Texas. And we went there and I'm standing right in front of the actual monument. I'm like, this is so surreal. It's a real place. It's not even on a set nowhere. It's like you can go and visit this place, which is awesome. Listen, man, I can share your uh, emotions about things. Like, it just reminded me when we were shooting Dick Tracy uh -huh. at night, like if we had a night scene and we were done cleaning up all the makeup and stuff, me and Drexler and a few of the makeup guys would go up to the Psycho House. Oh, my at, God. At Universal at night, you know? Dude. And, and just like. List. Oh. Bucket list. Yeah, man. That was, you know, you we would just creep each other out just being in you, you you go in the house at night you know and just uh, walk around the grounds and you walk yeah. up those stair that staircase yes. and yeah like talk about iconic film yeah. stuff and and i know it's a landmark they can't touch it it will never it'll always be there like yeah but i that is one place i will i will have that same kind of moment you will you know, because I mean, I believe the second Psycho Two, I believe, was filmed in there as well. You we, know, we were like we were like you kids in a candy store, man. Yeah, but like when we weren't shooting Dick Tracy on the back lot, we were like checking out the Spartacus staircase. You know, like where Dude, they, crazy. You know, you, it was just like here we are. Yeah, we're yeah. here. You know, it's like yeah. unbelievable, man. unreal. And yeah, we, were, I, we were from New York. Like, yeah, you know, we were. That was my first Hollywood picture. So it was like to be on the back lot of Universal, to like have the keys to the kingdom and walk around at night. Yeah, you know, and you could like look at everything you ever wanted to look at. Yeah, and not and like on, not like on a guided tour. Like you're, no, you, you could no. just walk around. That's the best ever, man. That's that that I don't. I'm not a fan of guided tours, but I just want to go and do my thing. So that's like, yeah, that's definitely high up on the bucket list. Is I know how you out. feel. I do. Yeah. I, I I total geeked out. Geeked yeah. out. Yeah. Love that shit. Love it, man. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, and it's it's crazy because I, I look, you know, I took a couple of notes, obviously, because I'll forget so, and I'm not going to go through every single thing you've done because we'd be here for nine hours. But it's like certain things, like 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 Waco, the TV series. Yeah, yeah. Now, now that's funny because well, not, the, the situation isn't funny, but on my last road trip. I was standing I, yes. on the in the rebuilt church on the original concrete slab of the Branch Davidian compound, speaking with David Caress's replacement pastor. Wow! With Nikki, it's like, wow. it's like it's like seven o'clock on a Monday morning, and I'm on the Waco. Con Why am I here right now? Wow. <laughs> that is yeah. surreal, man. Surreal wow. shit, man, and and and. It's just one of those moments, like, how did I get here? And I'm like, well, I planned this, and it just worked out. But yeah, never in a million years in certain places that I've been, only because of this whole Delta Bravo thing, which was right. always an interest of mine way before there was even social media or this whole team thing. It was always something like, A, I've always been a movie geek. Two, I always use this as a reference. I'm watching the original of first ever Friday the 13th as a little kid five, six years old, and I'm watching it, and I always wonder, I'm like, hmm, well, this is most likely a real lake. It's probably not called Camp Crystal Lake, but that's a real lake, and I wonder what it's really called, and I wonder if I can go there one day and really see where this was filmed. I'm having this thought as a little kid, and yeah. I've been there a half a dozen times since, but 
And then it just, this whole, this whole, this team thing, it just, it gave, it gave it that spark to actually be able to do something that I've always been interested in without ever, ever really knowing or understanding it. You know what I mean? So That's now great I, that you're doing it, man. That's so now great. it's like, right. So it's like, oh, and, and it's just, it, you know, it's, it's just funny how it worked out that it's like Danny boy from the rap group house of pain, you know, jump around and all that. So it's like, Right. It's so funny that it's him. And when I was 18, that song was everywhere. And I was always a fan. Now I'm friends with him. It's just it's just very weird how all that happened. Well, you're willing it to happen. You're putting it out in the universe. It, it I, responds, man. Something. But it was just it was just something that I genuinely was interested in. Like, all the tr- I hit up a lot of mafia stuff and true crime stuff. And right. it's just always something that I've been interested in, regardless if there was this whole place to put these things or not it was it just so happens that and we always say it's like that the picture at the end where i superimpose the old with the new that's just the end result of i love that i love what you do with that man yeah that's just the end result though of a lot of planning and 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 mapping out and searching and then putting in that effort to actually go to these places and look for these places. And, and there's so much that happens behind the scenes that you can't tell in that one picture, like this whole, you know, this, I, like I said, I took an eight day road trip. We drove 3000 miles in eight days. We, I, I think, I I think it was 175 pictures that I superimposed on each other. Right. Like 175 different ones in eight days and 3000 miles later. And, it's like Amazing. I will do it all over again. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It's just fun. And it's just I, it's something that I always and have. You're, mani- you're manifesting it, man. That's what you're doing. You're going out and you're doing it. You know, yeah. it's actually becoming a physical. It's yeah. no longer it's no longer the dream. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, it. I'm never bored. Yeah. I'm never bored. I always have something to do. I wish I had more time. It's like yeah. it's like I was saying to, to Helen when she popped on before, like we're gonna drag her to the Stepney Cemetery to go see the Warrens graves. The only reason why I even know I've been there before is because of this whole thing. Yeah. Is to go and I want to see the Warrens Museum and, and then all right, once we're there, all right, well, what else is around in that area? And we just go to all different spots. We sit yeah. in a, we sit in a diner that we never would ever be in if we weren't doing this. We meet nice people, we see different things. It's just getting out and just Getting out of the neighborhood and just doing Listen, this. man, some people like plan a vacation to Tahiti, right? You know, and they do it. Yeah. You, your vacation is going into these places that excited you as a child. Yeah, you know, yeah. Th- this is your vacation spots. One hundred percent. And, you, and yeah. you, you, you feel the fulfillment that someone would feel sitting on the beach in, in you know, uh, Fiji. Right. You know, it's, but see, it's if, a, I, if I ever went to Fiji. I would like. Let's just say, <laughs> I would be like, all right. Well, what was filmed in Fiji? Like, I wouldn't be able to lay on the beach. I'd be like, listen, I gotta go halfway up that mountain, and then I see that, I see that mountain peak. I have to be over here because the peak is. And 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 some right. stupid episode of some show was filmed here, and that's what I would want to do. <laughs> that's great, man. Want to do? Hundred percent. Love it. Where I go, it's almost like a sickness. We'll be watching something. And even Nikki, she'd be like, where'd they film that? I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I would pause it. I'll go into my thing. Film locations for, um, yeah. let's just say, Poltergeist 3, which you were, yes. you know, yeah. and, and I work, okay, this is in Chicago. This is in where, yeah. yeah. Like, ah, oh, that's too far. Maybe one day we'll get there, you know? You know, I have kind of the same kind of sickness. You know, it's like I'll watch old movies with Helen at night. And it's like you know, all the actors are not like living anymore, and all the like the 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 uh, not the principal cast, but secondary cast. And it, it, I don't know if this is sick, and I don't know if I should actually say this on national television, but I, I go I go to find a grave. So do I. And I, I have an, that, listen. I'll top that. I have that, an account. I put in my email and my password. I have an account for Find the Grave because if there's something wrong, I can edit it and correct people. <laughs> I was on Find the Grave yesterday, John. Where are you? <laughs> I go to cemeteries well, all know, the time, man. But but they not only tell you you know the, where they are, which is like you know Lon Chaney is over, and you know like I always look at Lon Chaney Senior's grave, and but you know if they tell you the story. Where is he? He's in um, 
uh, Forest Lawn, I think. Isn't he like in the mausoleum, like up in the top? Really? Somewhere. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's in like one of the marble vaults at the okay. top somewhere. Yeah. But um, they tell you, I find it great. They tell you the life, you know, when, the death, what happened in the yeah. end. And, you know, you get like a little synopsis of yeah. the person that you're watching on television. Yeah. And it's I, always. I know. I know yeah. all about Find the Grave, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's such No, a... it's fine. It's like, oh, Find the Grave? I was there yesterday. Like, I literally was. And so, you know, saying that, I hope that somebody down the road will watch something I've done and say, you know, where's John Caglione, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, maybe look me up. I'm fine. Yeah, again. look me up and go pay respects. Uh, and, and you know what? Like, I'll go pay respects, and, and I really do. I don't just go there just to take my because I've I've gone to so many. There's probably about eighty different mobsters that I've gone, and and, and I'll stand there for a minute, yeah. in, in moment of silence. I'll take a quick picture, and I'll go. Sometimes I'll leave a rock there or something like that, depending on who it is. But there's, you know, and it was just just veering kind of off. Like we went to um, we were up in North Jersey. In Fort Lee, there was a, a couple of scenes in Goodfellas that was filmed there. So we went there and I was like, you know, what? I'm never really in North Jersey. So we just drove up there and I'm like, all right. And so we're passing a couple of cemeteries. So I'm like, oh, well, what cemetery is that? And we see it. Okay. So we type it in, find the grave. And it just so happens because I did a whole bunch of, because I do a lot of true crime stuff. And, and is it morbid? Yes. But then again, it's also history. And I don't glorify yeah. it in any way. Um, but there was this whole, you know, the whole Son of Sam thing. You know what right. I mean? David Berkowitz. And then right. there was the Netflix thing, Sons of Sam. We watched that. So I went out, right. you know, and so we looked in the cemetery and we looked up Find the Grave. And and the there was a, a, one of, one of unfortunately, one of his victims was there. Stacey oh. Moskowitz, who was the, right. there was the only one that was that was shot and killed in Brooklyn. And it was his last one. It was his last murder victim and right. she was there and we stopped in there and i paid my respects to her and then right. i was like wow and i never really thought about it and then i go to find a great well i go to google and i've got a list of all the people that he murdered and yeah. i looked and i have this five more that i will go there and i will pay my respects to every one of his victims right 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 and i went to find the grave and they're all right there you can find them easily wow yeah yeah it's all there man yeah no it's amazing you know, place to go just to yeah. find out where people are, you know, yeah. and pay your respects. That's right. You pay your respects to them. And there's, there's a lot of people. It's like, it's like I found myself looking down and paying my respects to Burt Law, the oh. cowardly lion. Isn't he over in uh, Brooklyn? Isn't he right he's off a, the end? He's, a, he's in Queens. Jackie Robinson, is he in Queens? Yeah. Is I it the Jackie so. Robinson Parkway that you go? To? Is it the theater? Yes, the yeah. It's, it's that whole it's that whole cemetery belt right there. And Houdini's um, Houdini's over there. Houdini is in. I can't pronounce it. Nice. It's, yeah. We yes. I yes. We've been we've been to Houdini's. Um, I'm looking at Bert Lahr. He's in a Jewish cemetery. Yeah. Um, his real name was Irving Larhein, professionally known as Bert Lahr. Um, Union Field Cemetery, Section Eight. In Queens. In Queens, right. Yeah. Wow. What puts the ape in apricot? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Right. So it's like it's like I was a kid. <laughs> Who doesn't like the Wizard of Oz when you were a kid? I'm like, you know what? I want to go pay my respects. That's the cowardly lion, man. You know, yeah, yeah, amongst yeah. a million other things, but that's how I know him. So right. we're in the neighborhood. Let's go say what's yeah. up to the cowardly lion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, the wizard love, love, who plays the wizard is in Greenwood. Like that's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I know all of these things, man. I go visit all these people. And, and his name is it's not Frank Morgan. It's like Morgan Wh Sterners. Yes, Whooperman. Or, yes, Whooperman. Whooperman. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah man. And his family has a plot there. Like there's yes, a, yes. He's and you know what's what's funny. He, well, I don't know if it's funny or not. He's only like maybe fifty feet away from Crazy Joe Gallo. No shit. Wow. Yep. And Joe Gallo is buried to his next to his brother Larry. Wow. Which also brings up the fact that you worked on the damn Irishman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Sebastian Maniscalco played the comedian. Oh, yeah. yeah plays yeah. Joe Gallo. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah. Thank God for Al Pacino, man. 
Dude, crazy. And then how about not even a movie, not even with Al Pacino, that's absolutely legendary Scorsese film, one of my favorites. You worked on The Departed, dude. Yes, yeah. What? Yes. That was unbelievable. I, I was, I was like, the first few weeks I was a nervous wreck, you know? Well, dude, you have, you have first of all, Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Like, he's in my top three all-time favorite actors ever. Like yeah. that dude, some of my favorite, like, like, come on, The Shining and one yeah. of the cuckoo's nest. And like, yes. oh, the dude is incredible. So you have Nicholson, Matt Damon, yep. Mark Wahlberg, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. The time that you're working with, with, with Vera, right? Didn't you work with her on something else? Uh, Farmiga, yes, yes. Vera, yeah. Well, you know, they all those guys that you just named, they had their own makeup and hair teams. Okay. And some of the producers would lament. They'd say, we have more makeup and hair people on the call sheet than actors today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was like, I'm just the department head. I can't, you know, I don't know. You know? Yeah. But that's but, uh, incredible, man. Just And, and uh, there's a, a part of that movie that was filmed in Greenwood Cemetery as well. Right. That's on right. Warrior Path. I got it. That's, that's, yes. Yeah. Yes. Tw- the, almost, at the, almost at the very end. Right. If is walking away from Matt Damon, he's like, what about the baby? And she walks away. That's all Greenwood. Right. That's right. That's yeah. all Greenwood. And and I found, like, I couldn't find, because there was, like, when I look up film locations, I knew it was in Greenwood. But my, there was no, I've driven around Greenwood. My mom is in Greenwood. But I've been there so many times. I mean, th- it's so big that that one little it's path huge. could be anywhere. You right. know? Right. Yeah, so I yeah. wound up asking, like, the security guard at the front gate. I'm like, do you have any idea where this is? And he's like, uh, I'm not sure. And he's like, but there's a guy. I call him Frankie Tombstones because he's, because he's he works and he's, like, for 40-something years on the cemetery, in the cemetery. So he's like, yeah, you know, he might be around. So we're driving, and I see, like, a pickup truck, and there's a guy sitting in it. He's just parked. He's not visiting anyone. So I'm like... Maybe this might be the guy. So I was like, hey, you working? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how well do you know the cemetery? He's like, well, I've been here for 40 something years. I'm like, ah. Oh. I'm like, are you Frank? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, he's the guy that coordinates anything that's filmed in the cemetery. Right. So I'm like, do you know where this is? He's like, oh, of course. He's like, follow me. He drove us all the way. I, I was nowhere near finding right. it. And he drove me there. I was like, holy shit, here it is. Here's the path. It's called Warrior Path. It's, and yeah. yeah. But isn't Greenwood, doesn't it go all the way, like, uh, to, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't it go, like, all the way out to almost Forest Hills? It's, like, almost to, like, it's it go- It's giant. Not to Forest Hills, because it's in Brooklyn. But the, the, oh. highest, the highest point in Brooklyn is in Greenwood Cemetery as well. Right. God, wow. Yeah. It's a, it's a ridiculously beautiful cemetery. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Bill, the, Bill, the butcher, Bill the Butcher is buried there. Right, that's yeah. right. There's so many Albert Anastasia's there. There's so many people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. So the departed. I mean, insane. Departed. Some of the things you've done. I mean, American Gangster. That's another place that I've been to that that I've hit locations from that you worked on. That's right. We were all yeah. over Harlem and everywhere. Yeah. I didn't get anything from Harlem. I was out on Long Island at the old Westbury Gardens. Where, yes. where they're shooting rifles off the back balcony. Right, the mob guy and Denzel. Yes, yes. Armand Desante, who played the greatest right. John Gotti ever in the 96 movie, which that makes right. me mad because that was not filmed anywhere in New York. That was all filmed in Canada. That makes me mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can always tell, can you? You can tell. But they did very well. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe. And then, like, no, it's all like in Vancouver. I'm like, what? I'm like, and you watch, it's like, that looks like, you know, 23rd Street in Manhattan, but it's Vancouver. Yeah. 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 It's like, I see the, you know, the Bronx Tale is a great movie, Bronx Tale, but it's shot in Queens, know, Brooklyn. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, if you're yeah. from the Bronx, you yeah. know, you kind of see that the buildings are a little different. You know, it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah. I've hit several locations from there. And, and one right of them, Sheep said Bay. Like, okay. Steinway Street. You know, it's yeah. like right, yeah. <laughs> Astoria. It's a story. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Queens. Yeah. Nothing's in the Bronx at all. But yeah. I mean, 
The Departed, Dick Tracy, obviously. Um, I mean, Jesus. I mean, you have Amistad, Chaplin, The Blob. I mean, I love that movie, the, the remake of The Blob from what, was it like 1988? Yeah, around that time, yeah. yeah something like that. Um, Year of the Dragon. Even Year something Dragon. Even, even way back is like one of my favorites we're talking about horror. Like you did Friday the 13th Part 2. Like, yes, yeah, yeah. I got to work with Carl Fullerton. Yeah. Who was, like spearheaded all that. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that was like one of my first, besides Quest for Fire. Back Which then. is that incredible like, too. Like, Yeah, that was that's where I kind of learned how to, you know, really do prosthetics for films. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable, Johnny. Yeah, I've, I've been very blessed, man. You know, I don't, I, I count my blessings, honestly. You know, it's been, yeah. a, it's been a great run, you know. Yeah. Ama- yeah. Amazing Spider Man 2, Edge of Darkness, Salt with Angelina Jolie, 310 to Yuma, a couple yeah. episodes of The Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on, man. Like, it's The <laughs> Sopranos. It's incredible, dude. And it was, it's yeah. really like, as we're recording this, this isn't going to come out for a couple of weeks, probably. I have like one or two ahead, but. Like two days ago or three days ago, it was 24 years since The Sopranos aired their first episode. Where does time wow. The time is insane. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's so weird. You know, it's just... Yeah, I think it was, I think it was the 10th, it was, it was January 10th, 1999, I think. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. It's so hard to get... It's so easy to get tripped out for me. You know, now, you know, it's like Dick Tracy was... 1988 and it's 2023 right 24 where are we 23 yeah it's scary yeah it's going fast so let's just dig it you know while we got the time you know yeah man i mean even dick tracy i mean dick tracy i mean i mean there's not too many people to me that are cooler than william Forsythe. like i don't know i met william Forsythe at a horror convention he was the coolest guy ever the coolest man. He was yeah. perfect. Yeah, flat top. Yeah, he was flat perfect. top. Madonna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Madonna. In 1988. Come on. Yeah, man. yeah. Crazy. It it's was, like the uh, Bee Gees in '77. Come on. Yeah, man. no, it was a good. Was, listen, man, that was everything about getting Dick Tracy was a miracle. So, you know, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, really good. Thank you, thank you, thank we, God for Warren Beatty. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, that's and the guy that produces Avatar, the, you know, uh, John Landau, who does all of Jim Cameron's films. Yeah. Uh, it was him and Richard Silbert that kept giving my name to Warren, you know, because I'd work with those guys in New York on the Cotton Club. Richard Silbert was the production designer. Okay. And so yeah. when he was going to Dick, and some of the producers that were on the Cotton Club went to Dick Tracy. Barry Osborne uh, co produced the Cotton Club, and he said, There's this guy in New York, Cag Leo, does prosthetics. So, it's funny how things kind of like connect. Yeah, man. So it was those guys that kind of in- introduced me to Warren in a roundabout way. Wow. So hey, we all got to get help from someone. No one makes you're it right. on their. Own. Nobody makes it on their own completely. It's not right. possible. Of know? course not. But you're at, but you're out there, and you have a skill, and people know you because of your profession that you're good at, and and it's it's just, uh, oh, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, you know, you're expected to bring something to the table. You know? Of course. And if you don't, you're fucked. And so that's that, you know, right. it goes for everybody and anything that you do. Anything. So, yeah, yeah. So you got to bring your game. Yeah. You can't just sit there and, and think that things are going to happen for you. No, you got to put work in. And yeah, you yeah. obviously have, have put, been putting work in for, for decades. And I continue to, man. I like the, every job I do, even now, it's like, you know, my life depends on it. That's yeah. why I've always, that's what I've always felt. Yeah. Well, and, that's, a, you know, that's a good mentality to have. There's I mean, no phoning in here like you. There's no phoning it in, you know? Right. Yeah. You just go for it. Yeah. What are you working on now? I know. Well, first of all, I know that you you started up a whole online thing and you have your own YouTube yeah. channel. And it's called the uh, Makeup, what is it? Makeup Artist Workshop. Yep. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm really into now. Yeah. That's that's kind of awesome. And, and it's starting to really fly now. It's really It's really starting to, you know, gain momentum and we're excited so it's like fun and you know i get to do makeups that i don't have to wait for the phone to ring to do nice. so i'm getting to create my own stuff and and teach it and and people want to know about it so yeah you know, we've got some cool students and it's starting to uh and now i'm going to go to the savini school next week that's right before before we press record that's what we were talking about i was like hold on let me just press record 
Yeah, yeah. You know, no, so we'll, we'll, we're, you know that that's going to parlay into Savini and their school down there, and and uh, it's just it's nice. Uh, I'm really yeah. enjoying this, man. Yeah, man. As you, you know, should. hopefully we create a new group of makeup people. You know, so that's the yeah. that's the that's the plan. If I get something cool, uh, I can tap into some of my students, some of the people I know. Yeah, and then yeah. I, I'm training now, and they can come and help me. So it's yeah. like, of course, yeah, yeah, and and, and 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 like like we were saying before I started recording, it's like that's like the guy that was like that. He was my introduction of Savini. Savini who yeah. does practical effects on like these yeah. Friday, on, on the original Friday the Thirteenth and and all these movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, and all these movies that I'm watching, and I bought an ep uh, an episode. Uh, an issue of Fangoria, yep. and it was it was right when the final chapter, Friday the final chapter came out, and there was this whole big spread, and it was all about Savini. Savini is yep. back, and blah blah blah. And I'm like, kind of like, like I like this guy is like the guy, and I had the pleasure yes. of meeting him a couple of times. I have his phone number. I've texted him to do the podcast. He never gets back to me, but I was like, yeah, he gave me his phone number. I'm gonna. I even told him, I'm like, you give me a number. I'm going to text you and ask you to come on. He's like, all right, man. He never gets back to me, but Well, if I, if I happen to see him down at the school next week, I, 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 no, I swear to God, I'm not bullshit. I'll tell him we spoke and you're looking for him. Yeah, uh, th that guy is, yeah, man, he, he, unbelievable. And I, I wound up going on eBay. Like I had like a, a an image of, uh, it was um the makeup from the first Jason that he right. did. And I met him a couple right. of times and I always want to get so I support I buy something where, where it doesn't matter where and the second I didn't want another picture so I went on to eBay and I bought that same issue of Fangoria and right. I had to sign that cover so that's just something cool. it was, it's, yeah it's just, just just cool shit like that but yeah I would love to talk to that guy you know who I really want to talk to your buddy Al <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't even know what I would say to that guy, honestly. That's an elusive guy, man. That's yeah, uh, I was, I was, only, I was only half joking, but <laughs> I, I don't even know if if you were like, oh yeah, sure, like Al will get in touch with you, and you told me like we exchange. Yeah, honestly, I don't know what I would say to him. I would feel like every single thing that I'm telling him, he'd be in his head like. Okay, yeah, I've spoken about, I've spoke about this nine thousand times. Oh, you want to talk about dog day yeah. afternoon? You want to talk about heat? You want? Oh, let me guess. You want to talk about Scarface next? Like, I would just feel like I'm just fucking it all up the whole time. I don't know. I'd be a <laughs> like, mess, like all of us do with him. You know? Yeah, I would be a yeah. mess. I think talking with that guy. Well, you'd be surprised. He's a really great person to deal with, and he's so down to earth. And he makes you yeah. relax, and yeah. And that's yeah, we, why you know I've worked yeah, you, so well. You, you with told that. you told me that over uh, over pizza. Yeah, how he's yeah, a really yeah, nice yeah. guy. Wonderful. Yeah, man. He helped me get sober, man. The guy was great. Yeah, that's right. Many, many years ago, right. you showed a, fe you a fellow me. sober human being with me. Yeah, me too. Over eight years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful. Good for you. Twenty for me. That's awesome. I oh, would wow, I would have had more than twenty if it would have stuck the first time I tried to get sober. No, well, hey, listen, if at first you don't succeed, try to try again, my friend. Exactly. You know? I think the first time I legit tried was I was like 24. I'm 46. So I would have had 22 years under my belt. Dude, it's right now. You know how it goes. Oh, I know. I'm just saying. I, just yeah. never, I never even calculated that until just now. But yeah. yeah. Good for you. Told, it was October 1st was eight years. So. Oh, that's beautiful. Good for you. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's so, the best. It really yeah. is. It really is. It's the best. I, don't, I, I don't tell people on my word chat. I tell people on my worst day now, it's a hundred times better than my best day back then. You know, it's of like, yeah. oh man, it's just like, you know, all, I, I, I welcome the shit yeah. to deal with. It's like fun. Of course. Of course. <laughs> me too. It's like, bring it on. Like nothing, nothing, <laughs> what, nothing phases so me. Afraid of, yeah. Right? Yeah. Nothing phases me at all. I'm like, whatever it is, what it is. And whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm so, I don't care. I'm not embarrassed about anything. Hey, it, took that, it took that to get to here. That's all good. Yeah, man. Listen. It had to happen. It had to happen. Listen, if you would have told me eight, nine years ago that I'd be doing it and had the mindset that I have now and the things that yeah. I have now, and yeah. I would have thought you were crazy. I was like, there's no way. But, yeah, thank God. Always. Thank God, man. Always, yes. So are you working on, are you working on anything now besides, like, you? The workshop, man, it's all about, you know, that. 
And uh, I might, uh, it looks like I'm going to co produce a picture with a friend of mine. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm going to produce this film. It's a really, he wrote a really terrific script. And uh, we met with an actress, a really cool, well known actress the other day. And it looks like she's going to probably do it. And uh, I'm talking to a friend of mine, a really great DP to shoot it. So that's, you know, that's hopefully we'll start shooting in May. Wow. And it's That's a really awesome. terrific script my my buddy wrote, and it's uh, it's it's really cool. So I'm excited about that. You know? Wow, is, is that that's like new territory for you, no? Kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it, it's a whole new thing, but it's something I've been wanting to do for a while, and uh, it's it's coming together. It's really amazing. It's almost like we can't stop it now. That's awesome. So I'm really excited about that. I'll tell you more about it off camera. You know? Awesome. Yeah, definitely, and, and I'll yeah, hold, you know, I'll, I'll hold not, that because I want to hear it, and I won't tell yeah. anybody. You know me; I'm not going to yeah. say, nothing. you know. No, but it's exciting, and it's 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 coming together. It's beautiful, and you and it's possibly in May. Yeah, we'll start shooting in May in Maine. In Maine. Yeah, Stephen yeah, King territory. Yeah, we scattered locations a couple of weeks ago. It's perfect. We locked the location, so it's you know. Oh, it's so all, it's so it's happening. Yeah, it's it's it looks like it's all falling into place. It's like it's it's like taking on a life of its own. Beautiful. So it's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I wish you nothing but the best, man. You thanks, know. Thanks, man. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And you too. Thank you. I just Always. do my thing. I, I I I go to work, I do my thing, I come home, I talk to somebody every once in a while and then uh yeah. and then I go back and I start looking for locations and shit and then I go to bed and I do it all over. It keeps me content. I'm a creature of habit, you know, when it comes to certain yeah. things. So I get out there and, I, and I'm running around and, you know, I'm in traffic, but I have to go and try to line up this corner where some dude was, it's crazy, you know, like, it's some, awesome. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but I learn things all the time. Like, like the other day, like I have a list in my phone of photos and different things that, that I still need to get to. And, right. you know, those, but, but then like that list, like I'll hit a whole bunch of them, but then I'll have like 40 more. That So the list just keeps growing and growing, even though I keep on going to places because I'll, I'll look, it was, I was, I go down these rabbit holes and then I wind up in this other place and this other place. And I'm like, like I just learned for the first time, literally last night, I don't know how I got to it. I was looking up old school, like mafia shit. And I wound up, in this thing that I never even knew happened. It's called the Adonis club incident. And on Christmas day, 1925 on a specific street here in Brooklyn that I pass by all the time, there was this social club and it was owned by Irish gangsters back in the twenties. But at the time Al Capone was in Chicago, but he came back to New York because Al Capone was originally from Brooklyn and he brought his son to get surgery but Al Capone found out this ins and the outs that there was like a beef happening. So Al Capone and his friend had a whole bunch of people killed in this place in Brooklyn that I pass all the time. I'm like, I had no idea about this. And now there's a comfort in hotel where it was, but the house right next door is the same exact house. It was, it's still there right next door. So I can get the shot exactly and line up like the windows to this house and like, I never knew that that happened, but I'm fascinated with that old, especially that old timey New York way back in the day, kind of true crime stuff and right. the photographs that came out of all that stuff. And like over the weekend, I will go there and you know what I mean? So I find stuff all the time because I'm always looking, I'm always looking to explore and learn new things. So dude, there's a book in this man. That's a good tabletop book. Yeah, you know, that's that, yeah, that's yeah. that's been a thought that was been being tossed around with a few of us. Yeah, I mean the way you frame the shots and you superimpose the real frame of the film yeah. with the there there's a book there, man. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. People like to see that stuff. Yeah, and they it's really like do. a lot of people know don't even know that that exists. Like you yeah. know, like I'll show people. I'm like, all right, you look at this, and you see like this is the screenshot from the movie and the surrounding picture is what I took. And you see how this is the, and they're like, wow, like, like that's awesome work. Like I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's just cool. And there's yeah. several of us 
Yeah. You did that for Saturday Night Fever, didn't you? Didn't you go around? I Brooklyn? did several. Yeah, that was cool. That was really several funny. different that, uh, Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's one shot like people must look at me like I'm crazy. Where there's a spot, there's a part in the movie where John Travolta is walking into his house, and it's a crane shot. It's 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 shot from really high. So if I'm standing on the street, I can't get it. So there's one day. I'm double parked at the time I had my Explorer and I climb, I'm standing on my roof of my Explorer, even on my tippy toes with my <laughs> arms all the way up in the air, trying to get like the right angle. People must have been like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I'm like, what? 35 years ago, John Travolta was here. What do you mean? What am I doing? You That's know? Awesome. Yeah, I do that shit all the time. People must think I'm nuts, but whatever. And I'll see like, I'll be taking a picture of like a window of a building. And people will be looking at me, but it's like, no, well, that's where, I don't know, Johnny Depp was. That, like, down the street where Johnny Depp is walking with Al Pacino and Donnie Brasco on camera. Right. It's like, yes. obviously, taking a picture, people will just think I'm taking a picture of nothing. But no, right. I could line this shot up perfect. This is where they were. So Right. They're, that's cool, man. That's fun. That's a book. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's, that's an idea book. floating around the ether. Yeah. You, you got to do it. Yeah, if it happens, I'll give you a copy on me. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Signed. Yeah, of course. You better. And of course I will. You know that. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, as always, listen, um, we've been having like what do they what do they call it? Is it an Indian summer? What is it when it's a warm winter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's yeah, what it is. What is it? Uh, yeah, it's not the <laughs> Yeah, it's like, why is it 60 degrees today? It's the middle of January. It's weird. Yeah, the but, Farmer's um, Almanac was it's going to be a mild winter. They've been right so far. It's been yeah. great. Listen, Thank I, God. I'm yeah. not complaining about it at all. Yeah, a little snow is fine, but no. A little worry. bit, but don't destroy and shut down yeah. the city. I can't. I don't yeah. want to dig out. I don't want to dig out. I'm tired of digging my car out. I can't. People are fighting each other for parking spot. I can't. I have no time for that. But, um, so, but yeah, like but my whole point of bringing that up is sooner rather than later, we definitely got to meet up somewhere. I don't care. We'll All right. To you, we'll come out to you. We'll maybe we'll go out to another restaurant somewhere. Or we'll go. We love it. We love and it, Jimmy. Maybe we'll go. We'll go. So we'll go somewhere. Somewhere different. Well, you and Nikki are always welcome. So we I appreciate. Oh well, well, yeah, like I said talking. before, she sends her regards and she says hi to Helen and she can't wait to ours, see you. Ours back too. She's awesome. lovely. The yes. two of you. Thank you, sir. And as are you both. <laughs> but now I have to do it because I didn't bring it up. And I know that some people are going to want to be like, well, you didn't ask about Keith Ledger's Joker makeup in the Dark Knight. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Now, first of all, how you didn't win the award for that is beyond me. But that's well, like, yeah, well, yeah. What do you, you know, what are you going to do? It's iconic, man. He won it. He won that night. He did. He did. And actually, that's 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 great. That's yeah, there great. you go. He did win it, but yeah, you did the Joker makeup on Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. Which well, we is... were up against Benjamin Button. I mean, you know, that, that's like a big makeup job. You know, it's like yeah, but... yeah, it's like all this makeup on Brad Pitt and everybody. It's like you know, yeah, but still, still. yeah, well. Don't you know, sell yourself short. <laughs> I'm not actually. I was just going to say that a good good friend of mine. Very close friend said, John, no one's going to remember Benjamin Button. They're always going to remember the iconic Joker makeup. And, he, and he's right. And he's right. And I, and I'm not, it's what I've heard over the years from many people. Because you so, mentioned Benjamin Button and Brad Pitt. I cannot picture what that looks like in my head. He gets all, he gets from old to young. He's for old and he becomes young. I have no, but, I have no, I have nothing in my brain that's firing off and giving me that image. But well, you see, that's that's the thing. That's what you're talking about. It's like yeah. you say the Dark Knight, the Joker. People instantly see 100%. that that image. So yeah. that's and Heath made it what it was, and I I helped. It was great. That's your handiwork. We we worked well together. It was a good combo. Yeah, you know? yeah. Awesome, iconic shit, man. Legends. You worked with legends. You're a legend yourself, and oh. you're like a bread and butter guy. It's awesome. Well, just doing what I'm supposed to be doing over here. I hate to you. the best of my ability, just like you. That's it. I guess I just That's come true. on here and I end the story. Yeah, end the same story. Yeah. It's just that simple, man. It is. It really is.
Now, if you don't mind, I do have to throw out a couple of my sponsors real quick. Please. Um, do I get any free coffee? Yes. Okay, great. That's there it. is. I'm sorry. Dead, Dead Sled Coffee is, is a sponsor of Mission Statements as well as my old one. Um, awesome. So there was Carrie over there from my friend Mike. Um, Hello, we're getting some free coffee. Yes. yes I'll hook right you right up. Dead All Sled right. Coffee. Everybody, follow them on Instagram at Dead Sled Coffee. If you go to deadsledcoffee.com and you put in promo code Delta Bravo, you will automatically get 20% off of your order. And Woo. if you are watching this or listening and you're into horror movies and especially like and music and stuff, they have officially licensed coffee from like they have a Robert Englund blend, they have a Kane Hodder blend, they have a Rob Zombie blend, they have an Elvira blend, they have I mean, they have so much stuff, and it's all official. It from you know the, the Stephen King's it. They have officially licensed, and they're legally allowed to use these things for their coffee. And they they're a small company from Pennsylvania, and they do really, really, really cool stuff. And they have, I mean, every kind of coffee, whether it's little breakfast blends or espressos. They even have cold brew. They have t- different kinds of tea. They have all kinds of stuff. So Dead Sled Coffee on Instagram and DeadSledCoffee.com to order stuff. Um, also, new sponsor, well, not a new sponsor, but a sponsor for this podcast is Main Street Jukebox, who are also, they're in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. The guy, Tom, who owns the place is a Delta Bravo Explorer as well. Um, you follow them on Instagram at Main Street Jukebox, M-A-I-N-S-T Jukebox. They are an old school record store who's been around since 1994. Um, they reopened once because of a huge fire, but they, they they've made it through the whole COVID thing. They've been there since 94, like I said, and there's also MainStreetJukebox.com. It's a small, independent, family-run local business. So instead of always just going, if you're in the area, instead of just going onto iTunes and buying it, go and get yourself a record. Go get yourself stuff like that. They have books and toys and stuff like that, too, but small businesses, Main Street Jukebox. And then last, but definitely not least, my friend Kevin Bednars, who actually is the guy that gave me the name to drop in order to get onto the Waco compound because he was there three weeks before I was there and told me that it was insane. But Kevin Bednars lives in Virginia and he owns three pubs, but you don't have to drink there. There's the Percival Pub, the Ashburn Pub, and Percival Eats. They're all on Instagram and if you're in the Virginia area, go check it out. He's cool. a great guy. He's a super talented artist. And he's he's like one of us. He's a down-to-earth, really good dude who owns three successful pubs slash restaurants. And if you're in the area, tell him I sent you and go grab yourself. If you drink, grab yourself a beer. Have one for me. And, uh, you know, go get yourself a burger or something. So there you go. Those are all right. Friends. Wow. Look at you, man. Yeah, they're all friends. They're all just friends. I don't make anything off of this. They're just friends. They We help yeah, each cool, other and we cool, just get the word cool. out for each other. And that's it. That's all. That's no big. That's, that's how no, you I'm, I'm, not, I'm not paying any bills by doing this. I do this because, just like my last podcast, I genuinely enjoy talking with people that I'm interested in. Yeah, working. man. No, you're a beautiful person. You help me with all my t-shirts and all yeah. the designs. And yeah, you did it for free. You did it. You just gave yeah, it Yeah, I can't, I'm not taking money from you, dude. You know, it's karma. and You got a great karma around you. Your karmic propensity is stellar. You well, know? you know, you know and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest to you. I'll, I'll be honest to you. I'll be wide open and honest to you. I, I wouldn't take a dime from you. It was enjoyable for me to do that because, one, I never thought that I would be doing this for somebody that has done the work that you've done and the films that I've enjoyed you that you've worked on. That's number one. You're an Academy Award winner. That's just cool to me to be able to do something for you. I'm not taking a dime of your money. You know, we go to eat pizza I don't yeah. care about the bill. I don't care. I want to yeah. break bread and just to have Spumoni yeah. Gardens and shoot the shit with you and eat some broccoli rob. That's good <laughs> enough for me. That's, that's beautiful. That's, that's good enough for me, dude. God bless you. For real. God bless you, Jimmy. God bless yeah. you, man. You have beautiful you. artwork. You really helped me out big time. Yeah, no, and uh, and you're, you're a stand-up guy. You know, Any, I really anytime you need anything, just let me know and I got you, buddy. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you, man. Oh, it's good well, to see your face. Yeah, well, I, I figured there's this crossover. Like, like 
this the whole thing was based on the podcast was based on having people that do this whole urban exploration stuff. But like I had Darren Dalton who played um, Randy, one of the socials from the outsiders on last. And, you know, so, but this, this the reason why this connection there, because yeah. there's, there's, first of all, you're, the pop culture that you're involved in and had a hand in plays a huge part in this whole Delta Bravo thing. So pop culture thing, the movies, I've been to several locations that you worked on those yeah. movies, other people that I, that, that have been to your, so there's, it, it all, it, it all, it's a connection. Works. there's it's all a connections connection. there. So there's no reason why I wouldn't want to talk to you again, either on the podcast or even off it. All so. right. Beautiful. Well, that's music to my ears, man. Yeah, buddy. You know, Jimmy, you're great. Good friends, man. Absolutely. You know, for all your help and everything, man. You know, don't even thank me line. anymore. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah, that's good. what that's what friends you. do. You're a good man. Very thank lucky you. to know you. Very lucky. Same here, my man. Listen, we will definitely be in touch. We'll make it right. to go do something. And all right. That, Look forward to it. Nothing but the best. Always back at you. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this off, but I'm not gonna re be recording. But I want to okay. talk to you about what you're gonna do. Okay, cool. Be good, buddy. You too, Jimmy. Thanks for everything, man. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs>